Hello, this is Uncle Jim. In a previous video, we did a milk jug test with uh, the old Black Talon ammo, and I shot it through a CZ. And then I was talking about the old original CZs, the Pre-B and the Transition. And I said that this was the granddaddy that started it all. And that wasn't 100% true because they had a model before this, which was unobtainium in the USA. And I don't know how many they made, but uh, the original CZ-75 looked more like this. Okay, so the very, very, very first CZ-75 looked like this. And you'll notice it's cut out way back here and on the slide so the hood is like halfway more than halfway cut but it's kind of cool and you'll notice the black widow what i call the black widow grips i don't know why this is white and it looks like they filled it with black i don't know so there is the original if you want to get testicle people but you're not going to see that in the states I don't know how many people uh, actually have seen one in person. I never have. And so uh, there is that. That's your original CZ granddaddy that started it all. All right, let's go to Grandma. All right, so we're going to have to call this Grandma. And there's a lot of things I need to clarify in this video. All right, so we'll call this grandma because technically there was a, a model with a different frame and slide cuts that was the original CZ in occupied Czechoslovakia before they came to the States as this model, the original pre-B in the United States. All right, so... Uh, in that last video, I said this had a crappy powder coat finish. The original pre-B in the United States. Well, it turns out it was enamel, an enamel finish. Uh, it's been a long time, people, okay? This was an enamel finish, and you can see where it was wearing, where the uh, safety scrapes here below the safety and uh, if you carry it holstered right here on the frame and it would wear off and some other pieces uh, another thing was it was slippery okay and at one time I had skateboard tape on here because it got really slippery with sweaty hands but I'm going to leave it alone. I can refinish this. I can gun coat, Cerakote. I do all that stuff. Um, but I want to leave it alone because I'll never get that import mark back from Montana. And so I want to leave it stock. You know, don't mess up a classic gun. Even if it needs some stuff, leave it alone. That's how it came. Leave it be. All right. So, um... This one still has the Black Widow grips, which I love. And my neighbor has a CNC wood uh, machine. He could probably make these grips if he could get the little squares. I don't know if he could get the little squares, but if he could, I might do that and save these grips and put those on. We're going to run it by him. He's right down the road. All right. What else do I got to clarify here? Uh, one thing, okay, uh, I got replies back. Um, what year did these come to the U.S.? Surplus, cheap. This one was $289. It only came with one magazine. Uh, this is a 1984. All right, and then they came out with the transition model which has the uh, same guts. They went to a skeletonized hammer, more traditional CZ grips with the logo down here and the dreaded square trigger guard, just like your modern CZ 75s. 
I prefer the earlier with the round trigger guard. I love this hammer. It doesn't bite you. I just love it. And the beauty, oh, I love the scallops on the uh, slide. It's just so retro. It's cupped. It's cupped out. It's just, you just can't get that anymore. So I like that. All right, so it had an enamel finish. I thought it was a powder coat finish. When it went to the transition, uh, it's got a way better finish. It, nothing needs done to this. And we shot it out in the snow, and you don't have to worry about rust. So I don't know what finish they put on these. They both take the same magazines, and we'll talk about that. So I got a reply. What year was this imported? Um, this one was is a 1984. And then when they went to the transition before the decocker, uh, it's a, this one's a 1993. So I would say mid 80s for the original and mid 90s for the transition. And they shoot every bit as good as any modern CZ. They are awesome. And they actually have a better trigger because there's no firing pin safety and no decocker for extra parts. As John Browning designed, these are a copy of the Browning High Power done in single and double action. And the reason I say that <clears throat> is they went with a very comfortable grip, high capacity, all steel gun. They copied John Browning and everyone else did too. All right. So another thing I said in the video is uh, even though they don't have a firing pin safety, they're safe. Well, that's not 100% true. I should have clarified on that. You have to treat these like a original Series 70 1911. So if you drop them on the nose without a firing pin safety, they can go off. But what you do, just like a, a, a 1911 that's a Series 70, is put an extra power firing pin spring in there. So the inertia of the firing pin doesn't make it go off when it drops on the nose from 6 or 8 feet. And I should clarify that. Now, I had a boss, a really good boss... He was an ex-police officer, and he told me a story one time where a friend of his was in the locker room, and he was taking off his clothes in the police locker room, and he had a star pistol, you know, the uh, surplus star pistols, as a backup gun, and it dropped, it dropped like this. Bam, it fell out of his uh, coat and it dropped like that and it shot him right in the chest because it didn't have a firing pin safety. So you, you always want to think about that and put an extra power firing pin spring on the older guns designed in such a way. The beauty of these is it doesn't mess with the trigger like a Series 80 1911. So these older CZs don't have to push up on a plunger to release the firing pin, and it doesn't have a, uh, a decocker, which has extra parts and can also screw up. I had a Makarov. I had a guy with a Makarov. My Makarovs never did it, but I had a guy with a Makarov pistol. It wouldn't fire because the decocker screwed up, and we fixed it. And he thanked me. Anyway. Uh, what else? Let me cut. Okay, so here's another quirky thing about the pre-Bs and the pre-B transition. Um, and I'm rambling, but I thought you might find this interesting. Europeans were deathly afraid of their magazines dropping free. <clears throat> so... They were super scared of their mags dropping free for police or military, whatever. 
They didn't want their mags to drop free on the ground. So on the original pre-B here, it only drops that far, and then you pull it out. Okay? Same, same thing with the pre-B uh, pre transition model here, except for I fixed this one. So watch that. All right, it drops free. And I don't know what it is with Europeans, but the Browning High Power was the same way. On the Browning High Power, they, the mags don't drop free because of the mag disconnect, which is a pin on the trigger. It's a plunger and a spring, and it screws up your trigger, and it makes your mag not drop free. So I fixed all my high powers that way. Um, and all you have to do is uh, take out that pin. It's tapered. And then it, it, the parts come right out the mag well. And boom, you got to drop free and you got a better trigger. Now on the CZ, it doesn't affect the trigger at all. It, all it is is a flat spring that goes down the rear of the frame. And it has nothing to do with anything else. Other than making your mag not drop free. So let's take a flashlight here and I'll show you that. So here's the original that has not been molested. And you can see in the back here, it's just a flat spring that goes all the way down. No other function but to keep your magazine from dropping. And see that uh, kink in the back of the spring there? All right, that is all that's holding your magazine. So CZ changed that, and you can buy a flat spring from CZ or wherever uh, to fix it, or you can bend it yourself. So this one here that I fixed, you'll notice it's not kinked so much. I just flattened it out and put it back in. It's super easy. And it drops free. And that's all it was, was just this uh, V kink in the back of the magazine. Well, so uh, there's that. One drops free, one doesn't. Um, now, I also mentioned that the uh, for the pre-Bs, the mags were easily obtainable. But then I looked around today, and they're, I, they're not so easy to get. Magar, all right, this is original for the granddaddy here, grandma. This is the original mag that came with uh, my gun, and they scribed the serial number on it to match the gun. That's how you used to get them in, in 1984 or whatever. Um, the other thing is the magazine. So, uh, I said that the pre B mags were easily obtainable. And then I look online lately and Magar used to make the pre B mags. So you had the exact factory pre B non decocker mags, and they are slightly different than the modern CZ 75. I look around and maybe I'll have to look further, but I didn't see uh, them listed. So uh, some people use a modern PO1 CZ mag and people have like 50-50 results as far as totally reliable. These mags are totally reliable. They work in both the transition and the pre -B and they have a butt plate like that and that's how they look plastic follower so i'm gonna have to search around for more of those i, I only have like four i thought hey i could get one anytime from me uh megar uh maybe they still make them but uh, there's that also so uh the funny thing about the browning high power is instead of getting rid of their stupid mag disconnect they put a little mousetrap spring on the base of their magazine that would flick the magazine out and i thought that was the stupidest thing ever typical modern browning 
when all they had to do is get rid of their mag disconnect because I can't stand those son of a bitches either. So uh, mag disconnects on people are only trouble. Uh, you know, you're asking for trouble to put a mag in before you can pull the trigger. I that's stupid to me. And people can get more hurt than whatever. All right, I guess that's it for now. I'm going to go on to something else. Um, before I put these away, I thought I'd do a video on these. And if you have any questions, uh, just let me know. I love the old pre-BCZs without the uh, firing pin stop that screws up the trigger and also the the damn decockers. Uh, these aren't Berettas. They, they were never de designed to be like a Beretta. You can carry them cocked and locked or half cocked. All right. I guess that's it. Until next time, next video will be 3D printed mags or uh, these for the shotgun. All right. Thanks for watching.